Proverbs chapter 30. I'm happy that you're here. I think that you will be blessed for being here by because of the singing and the praying and the worshiping together and the studying of God's Word. It is indeed a blessing because God teaches us that on the first day of the week we're supposed to come together with the church to study and be part of the church praising and honoring Him. Amen. So I am glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're present. I'm glad that you're part of the worship service. Amen. I am so thankful that we have visitors and that we have a lot of children with us. In Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 24, the scripture says that four things are small on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ant are not strong people, but they prepare the food in the summer. The rock badgers are not mighty people, yet they make their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet all of them go out in ranks. The lizard you may grasp with the hands, yet it is in the king's palaces. Last week we talked about the ants and and dug a little, dip, a little bit deeper into the scripture that talks about the ants and made some spiritual applications. So in this lesson, we want to study and learn about this very intelligent and wise, yet small and weak animal, the rock badger. Now some translations might call it the rabbit, but it's really not a rabbit. It is a, a rock badger. In Job chapter 12 and verses 7 and 9, Job chapter 12, verses 7 and 9. But now ask the beast and let them teach you. And the birds of heaven and let them tell you. Or speak to the earth and let it teach you. And let the fish of the sea declare to you. In other words, God has, has created all of these animals and nature itself. And used them to teach us a lot of interesting and important lessons. If we would but just take a moment to pay attention to nature. The, the, the nature itself declares the glory of God and declares to us that there is a God. Again, if we would just take the time and listen and look. Observe how great and glorious and wonderful is the creation of God. So let us spend some time here in Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 24. And I didn't know that we would have a, a veterinarian in the audience, or maybe I would have chosen a different topic and not taken so many liberties in my lesson about these rock badgers. But he probably doesn't know much about rock badgers anyway. He works on horses. <clears throat> in the Old Testament, Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 5, Rock badgers were considered to be unclean animals. And, and unclean animals, for those of you that, that don't know much about unclean and clean animals, in the Old Testament, an unclean animal was an animal that, that the Jews couldn't be around. They couldn't touch. They couldn't eat. And God had His reasons, but I really don't know why a rock badger was considered an unclean animal other than the specification that God gives. But, but why it was unclean, in other words, why they couldn't eat it or touch it, I, I really don't know. You know, like, like the raven, why was it unclean? I, I know it ate, it ate dead bodies, but, but why did God make these animals unclean? Were they less worthy? Were they dangerous? I, I really don't know. But it was in that list, in that classification, that, that was considered unclean. And, and the Jews couldn't touch it. They couldn't eat it. And they couldn't have anything to do with this animal. But still yet, God says about this rock badger that it is not a mighty people. That they are wise, but yet they're not strong. They're not like the lion. They're not like the tiger. They're not like the bear. They're not like the mighty elephant or the rhinoceros or the hippopotamus. 
But he says, go to it, pay attention, because there are wise. The rock badgers look like the, like the guinea pigs. They're, they're, they're the size of a domesticated cat. Short tail and round ears. Well, well we, we are like these rock badgers, the scripture says, that we are like the rock badgers. We're not a mighty people. And why is it that we, the people, we humans, the creation of God are like rock badgers? Well, the reason that we're like rock badgers, according to Romans chapter 5 and verse 6, is because we are weak. And what has made us weak is sin. And sin has made us weak because we don't have the strength to be able to save ourselves. Again, Romans chapter 5 and verse 6 says, while we were still helpless... At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. In other words, while we were dead in our sins, way back in Genesis chapter 3, when Adam and Eve decided to partake of the forbidden fruit, I don't know if, 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 if all of you here have read that account, but if you haven't, or even if you have, I'll give you a refresher course. When God made Adam and Eve and put them in the nice and beautiful Garden of Eden, God said to man, you may eat of every tree in this garden except this tree. And that tree happened to be the tree of knowledge, of good and evil. He said, the day that you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. I don't want you to eat from this tree. It's for your own good, for your own protection. If you eat of this tree, you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to die. And one day Eve was out in the garden, just looking and enjoying the beautiful, the beautiful uh, garden that God had placed her in. And a snake was out in a bound. And the devil had taken the form of that snake. And the devil began to talk with Eve. And the devil said to Eve, So is it true that God said that you cannot eat of any tree? And Eve said, No, that's not true. God has said that we can eat of all the trees except this very one here, because the day that we eat of this tree, we shall surely die. And the devil said, That's not true at all. The truth is that when you eat of this, tree, you'll, uh, of this tree, you'll become like God, knowing the difference between right and wrong. So then Eve looked at that tree, analyzed it, and decided that that tree was good to eat, and she took of it, and she and her husband Adam ate of that tree, and everything fell apart. They realized that, that they had messed up. And God came and talked to them. And he cursed, God cursed the ground, he cursed the serpent, and he cursed mankind. Punished them. But part of that curse, he said to the serpent, that the seed of woman, that is that some, a descendant of that woman would come and crush the head of the serpent. Now that simply means that eventually Jesus would come, the seed of woman, and would deliver the crushing blow, destroy the serpent, the devil. And Jesus indeed accomplished that. When he died on the cross and resurrected on the third day, and disarmed the devil. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15. Gives us now the hope. That we too on that day. When Jesus returns. We will resurrect. And never die again. So when. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 6. While we were dead in our trespasses. Dead in our sins. 
while we were still helpless at the perfect time. Jesus Christ came and died for the ungodly. We are helpless. We are a weak people. Just like the rock badgers, we are not a mighty people. And we don't have the power to save ourselves. We don't have the power to save ourselves from sin. That's why we need the wisdom to reach out to a Savior, Jesus Christ. And Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 23 says, I know, O Lord, that a man's way is not in himself, nor is it in a man who walks to direct his paths. We need God to direct our paths. Rock badgers are wise, as Proverbs says, because they make their homes, they live in rocks. They make their homes out on the mountains in the rocks. Now, how does that make them smart? Because these rock badgers, they know that if they don't live inside or within the crevices, the cracks of the rocks, that an eagle or some type of animal prey can come and immediately grab them kill them, and eat them. Because they're not strong to defend themselves. So they need to find a place where they can feel safe and secure. And they do that by hiding or making their homes within the rocks. 2 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 2. 2 Samuel 22 and verse 2. The prophet says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my savior. You save me from violence. The 62nd Psalm, Psalm 62 and verse five, the psalmist cries out when he says, My soul, wait in silence for God only. For my hope is from Him. My only, or He only is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold, I shall not be shaken. O oh God, my salvation, let my glory rest. The rock of my strength, my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times. O oh, people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. These rock or these rock badgers feel safe and secure because they find their shelter among the rocks. In Isaiah chapter 28, or rather in Psalm 104 and verse 18. The Bible says that the high mountains are for the wild goats and the rocks are a refuge for the rock badgers. Jesus Christ is my rock. He is your rock. And as long as we stay in Christ, there is nothing and there is no one that you and I should fear. As long as we are in Christ, we shouldn't fear anyone. There is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. There is no power, no authority, no death, no height. There is no devil, no spirit, no power. Neither in heaven, on earth, or in hell that can separate you from the love of God. As long as we remain in Christ. And this is why Proverbs says. Look at the rock badger. Although they are small in size. Although they are a weak people. Or a weak animal. They are extremely wise. Because they always stay close. 
to their rock. And shouldn't we do the same always? Think about this. When your life starts falling apart, and when everything just starts falling apart and nothing goes right, it's usually because your relationship with God, your walk with Christ, is not right. First Peter chapter 2 and verses 4 through 10 <coughs> teaches us a principle that we take refuge in Christ when we believe in Him and obey His Word. And God will keep His children secure and safe in His everlasting arms. Now these rock badgers are wise because they protect themselves from the adversaries. Now, imagine a, a badger of this size, the size of a, of a domesticated cat. How in the world is it going to defend itself against a lion, against a, a ferocious tiger? There is no way that it can stand and fight against it. No way. But if it runs and hides among the rocks, in, the, in between the crevices of the rocks, that lion or that tiger can paw and scratch until its paws are all bloodied up. But it won't get to that rock badger because it's made its home safe and secure among the rocks. These rock badgers can't dig holes. They don't have the claws to do that. So they hide among the cracks and creases of these rocks. Christians also need defense against everything that attacks us in this world. And Matthew chapter 7 verse 15 teaches us that, that the false teachers are out like ravenous wolves. Trying to convince us. To leave that form of doctrine that we've been taught to be the truth. By soothing our ears with words and doctrines that, that seem more attractive than what the truth is. And you know when animals get killed? It's because they're out looking and searching away from their protection. That's when they get killed. That's when they get attacked. And a ravenous wolf, as far as false teachers are concerned, come in all forms, shapes, sizes, and ages. Understand that. Can come in the shape, or in the form, or in the size, in the age. A sweet little old lady, sweet little old man, false teachers come in every age, form, size, sex, and color. Better watch out. Stay close to God's Word. That's your security, that's your refuge, that's your rock. The roaring lion, according to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, is that devil seeking whom he may devour, offering so many temptations so that we may become just like the world and fall away. Now here's an interesting thing about how the devil works. The devil doesn't have the power that he used to have before Christ came and died. He doesn't possess us. It doesn't take over us. He just has the temptations. So this is why we need to stay close to Christ. Close to the word. And fill our minds with all the good things. And empty our minds with the bad things. James teaches us that, that sin is conceived in the mind. 
as we think about sin and play with it until we finally act on it. That's temptation. Finally, this little badger has such a light cup features on the bottom of its pads that give it an amazing ability to hold on to the rocks. So when that wind comes or when it's trying to climb the rocks or the mountains at an angle, it can hold on amazingly. Well, we too have the capacity to hold on to Christ. Cling to Him. In Hebrews chapter 2 and verses 1, 2 and 3 teaches us the principle to find Christ and hold on to Him for dear life. We need to hold on to Christ, hold on to His Word, because that's, what's, that's what will carry us to heaven. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, Thanks be to God that although we're not mighty in people, like these rock badgers, we can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives us the strength. Read with me, if you will, in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 8. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 8. And will come about to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together for the war. The number of them is like the sand of the seashore. And they came up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are also. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. But those that escape that torment are those that remain faithful to the Lord until the end. I end by saying this. For while we were yet sinners, one of those earlier passages we talked about in Romans, for while we were yet sinners, Christ died at the right time for us, giving us a way of escape. If you're here with us this morning and have not obeyed the gospel, have not given your life over to Jesus for the remission of your sins, you may do so and hold on to him for the rest of your life for dear life. By confessing with your mouth that you believe that Jesus is the son of the living God. By making up your minds that you're not going to live a life apart from Jesus. By being baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. And living as dedicated to him as you can. You can do that today and give your life to Jesus as together we stand and sing.